Hi, my name is Arthur Benjamin and I am a mathemagician. What that means is I combine my loves of math and magic to do something I call mathematics. Now, I've loved numbers ever since I was a kid. And when I was a kid, my favorite number to multiply was the number 11. Because not only was it easy to multiply one-digit numbers times 11, it's also very easy to multiply two-digit numbers by 11. Let me give you an example. Um, let's pick a small two-digit number. Let's say 23. So 23 times 11 is as easy to do as 2 plus 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. And there's your answer, 253. Here, let's try another one. Let's say the problem was, oh, 53 times 11. 5 plus 3 is 8, and there's your answer, 583. All right, one more. This time I want you to try it, okay? What is 81 times 11? Give me the whole answer. It's 891. Great. Now, before you get too excited, I've only shown you half of what you need to know. Because what if the number adds up to something bigger than 9? Suppose we had a problem like, let's say, 85 times 11. Now, 8 plus 5 is 13, but the answer is not 8, 13, 5, I'm afraid. We only have room for the 3. But the 1 makes the 8 carry, and the answer is 9, 35. You got it? Okay, let's try one more. You try and, and multiply 77 times 11. 7 plus 7 is 14, so what's the answer? 847. Well done. The other kind of calculation that I like to do is squaring numbers. That is multiplying a number by itself. For instance, 5 squared is 25. 6 squared is 36. Now let me first show you how to square any two-digit number that ends in 5, and then I'll show you how to do any two-digit number at all, okay? But squaring numbers that end in 5 is especially easy. So if you square a number that ends in 5, let's say 35 squared, that means 35 times itself. Now there's only two things you need to remember. First, the answer will always, always end with 25, okay? Now, how does it begin? It begins by taking the first digit, which in this case is 3, multiplying it by the next higher digit, which is 4. 3 times 4 is 12, and that's your answer, 12, 25. Okay, here, you try it. Let's say 65 squared. Okay, now the answer will end in, always ends in, 25. And it begins with 6 times 7, the next higher number. 6 times 7 is 42, so there's the answer, 42, 25. Okay, this time let's do it from left to right. Let's say the problem was, oh, 95 squared. Okay, so now we start by taking 9 times 10, which is 90. So your answer is 9025, that is to say 9025. How about that? Now what if your number does not end in 5? Suppose you want to square a number like 23. Now 23 is not a bad number to multiply, but what number close to 23 is much easier? How about 20? So I'll go down 3 to 20. And to keep it balanced, if I go down 3 to 20, I go up 3 to 26. So the first part of my calculation is I do 20 times 26. Now I'll put a little smiley face on that zero, because I like zeros. Let's do 2 times 26, and then we'll attach the zero. Now when you do mental math, you should always try and do it from left to right. That's how we read numbers and pronounce numbers. That's how you should mentally calculate numbers. So if I do 2 times 26, that's 40 plus 12 is 52. So with the friendly zero, that becomes 520. Now that's almost the answer. All you have to add to this is the square of the number that you went up and down. You went up and down 3. 3 squared is 9. 
And there's your answer, 529. Isn't that magical? Let's do another example. Let's say, oh, let's say you want to square the number 98, okay? 98. Looks hard, but it's not so bad, because this time the nearest easy number would be 100. So we'll go up 2 to 100, down 2 to 96. 96 times 100 is 9600. And what do we add to that? We always add. We add the square of 2, because we went up 2 and down 2. 2 squared is 4. And what's 9600 plus 4? Of course, 9604. 9604. Now let me explain to you why this works. I mean, here I am at the Mathematical Association of America, and I am a professor of mathematics at Harvey Mudd College, so I would be remiss if I didn't show you why this method works. So here's the algebra behind the method. If I'm squaring a number, let's say I'm squaring A, then the algebra says that A squared is a plus d times a minus d plus d squared, where d can be any number, but I choose it to be the distance to the nearest easy number. Okay, so for example, when I do, when I do 98 squared, d, the distance, is 2. And that says that 98 squared is 98 plus 2 times 98 minus 2 plus 2 squared. That's 100 times 96 plus 4, which is exactly what we have here. Now once you get good at squaring two-digit numbers, you can take this further and square three-digit numbers. So for example, let's say you wanted to square a number like 212. I won't let this stop. 212. Now the nearest easy number now would be 200, right? So I'm going to go down 12 to 200, up 12 to 224. Let's do that multiplication from left to right. So 2 times 224 would be 448. Attach the two friendly zeros here, and we have 44,800. Almost done. All we have to add to this is the square of 12. And if you know that 12 squared is 144, you can say your answer. Just add them from left to right, and we have 44,944. Here, let's do a bigger problem in your head. I won't even write it down. Let's say you wanted to square 999. Now, on paper, that would be a big mess, but you can do it in your head, right? Because what are you going to do? You're going to go up 1 to 1,000, down 1 to 998. What's 998 times 1,000? 998,000. And what do you add to that? Just the square of 1. So your answer is 998,001. Now trust me, with just a little bit of practice, you can do these problems very quickly. Here, let me show off a little. Bruce, give me a three-digit number. I will try and square it as fast as you can do it on the calculator. About 347. 347 squared is 120,409. <laughs> Let's try another three-digit number. Go ahead. 721. 721 squared is 519,841. Here, let's try a four-digit number. This one, I'll be a little slower on, but I'll try and get it right. Go ahead, a four-digit number. 4436. 4436. Four, OK, this will take a little time, so bear with me. 19 million. Thank you very much. <laughs>